in the last video I showed you how to create the query which allows you to type in part of someone's last name and that will pull up the records for that person. Um, we also went through and created TBL Learner. We went through the relationship and how to create certain aspects uh, down here in the bottom. So how to do the input masks, the captions and certain things like that. Um, this time round, I'm sorry, now what you can see is I've already created the other tables. Uh, these actually haven't been created. I have pulled these in from an existing database that I created some months ago for this exact same system. I, I state that because the field names are going to look different because I was following an earlier convention or basically I was working to uh, my own little pretense. It also shows that basically even though we all have our own conventions we also have a very good way of breaking them at any time we wish to. Okay, this video is about forming relationships between these objects and basically what we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with our ERD. So whatever we did before, that's our ERD. That's what we should end up being able to see in our finalized system. Um, let's go back to the database. To form a relationship between tables is very, very simple. There are two methodologies we can follow. The first one I think is the simplest. Database tools, relationships. Now you should have had this pop up. If you've never used this before, this will pop up this little table here. If it hasn't popped up, then simply go to show table and it will pull this menu up. Yours may look different to this. This is because I've got a basic model of Windows 7 running. Um, yours might be much more flamboyant, but basically it says the same thing. That's true with all my menus. So what we've got here, I'm going to create the relationship between the learner and the lesson. So I've double clicked on both the tables, they've appeared behind and I'm going to click on close. I'm going to list all the fields so I can see them clearly and I'm going to do that with the second one as well. Now we know that the relationship between the uh, table, uh, the lesson and the learner, we know that because it's in our ERD. Our learner has a one to many relationship with lesson. Because there's a many relationship here, we know that there's a foreign key for learner inside the lesson. So let's have a look. I have the primary key for learner here, and if I look through, I find student. Now, though, because there's because of this time difference between the construction list, I haven't called this learner ID. I've simply called it student. I know that these are one and the same. This is the foreign key to this primary key. And all I've got to do to form a relationship between this, the foreign key and the primary key, is to click, drag, drop. As soon as I do so, I get this menu up. That's now forming the relationship, but before I click on create, I need to be thinking about the options down here, referential integrity. The system currently will allow me to delete a learner from here, even though they've got a whole series of lessons in here. So Nicola Long, I could put enter her into the system here, I could enter all her lessons into here, and when I delete her d data from my TBL learner, the lessons will still remain. That can present me with a problem. Let's say an instructor uh, said, oh, I would pay £25 for this lesson on this particular date at this particular time. I need you to pay me for that lesson. Andy Brake will go to the system, pull up that time and say, yes, certainly there was a lesson then and it was uh, at, on this at this date but there is no corresponding learner. I don't know who the learner is. I don't know where this has come from. I can't trace it back to the original person. Therefore, I cannot confirm the lesson has occurred. So this idea is being able to delete data and leave behind the related foreign key information is something that referential integrity is to stop. So if I put a tick into this box, what would happen now is if I try to delete Nicola Long's data, the system will stop me. It will say you're not allowed to do that because of referential integrity. Because to do so is going to leave behind these foreign key entities and that's going to mess up your database. But I can alter that. For example, cascade delete. What this allows me to do is I can now delete Nicola's. If I've got it ticked, I can delete Nicola's data. And what Access will then do is delete all related foreign keys. So basically, if I've got uh, Nicola's details in here, and I delete Nicola Long's details, all of her lessons will also be deleted. 
doctor can say, look, I taught someone three months ago, I don't think I got paid, Andy Brake would go to system, and he wouldn't simply find the lessons but no learner, he would find no lessons at all. This can also mess up an accounts system. You've done all these purchases, your customers have purchased things from you, you delete a customer so all their purchases disappear. That means you've now not got any details of that money coming in. Your accounts now show a different balance. So be very wary when using Cascade Delete. You either tick it or don't, but tick it because you know you should, or don't tick it because you know you should. Cascade Update is another way of working. This allows you to change the details for the primary key. Basically, it's the primary key that you're affecting. If you haven't used an auto number, let's you say that you work at Argos Catalogs and you've got a catalog number up here. If referential integrity will not allow you to change that primary key reference. You can't change that Argos catalog number because there are corresponding records. People have purchased that item. What you can do is tick the item and then when I make the change to the primary key, that will cascade through the system and change all the related primary keys to the same value. That might be a perfectly valid thing to do. You have to decide if that's a safe thing to do. If you're not too sure, leave it unticked. Beneath this, it tells us that there's going to be a one-to-many relationship, and we know that from what we've seen before. So what I'm going to do now, now I've ticked some uh, referential integrity, now I've decided what I want to do with these two, I'm simply going to go create. I'm now going to just move these around a little bit. Now I know the learner is at the top and I'm going to move this just to the side at the minute but I can see the axis is to the one on the one side sorry I'm quite fussy about straight lines weird um, I've got a one here and an infinity here that's a one to many relationship and if I look at my ERD I can see learner to lesson is a one to many or one to infinity relationship so that's the beginning of my relationship. Couldn't be any simpler. The other way of creating a relationship is to remember where the, your foreign keys are. They're all in my TDL lesson. And to go to the foreign key, click on the drop down and go to look up wizard right at the bottom. This will help you to create the relationship and define certain other bits of data. We've already looked at this before because we've already done the drop down list, but this time we're going to look up the data in another table or query. I'm going to click on next and I'm going to choose, because I chose instructor, it's a TDL instructor. I'm going to choose the ID because that's the relationship, but I could decide also to take other data. This does present you with a problem, um, but let's first of all take this data across and last name across. Let's leave that. Let's take area across as well. If you if you want everything, using the double arrow will pull everything across. Next. I can now sort the data. So I could tell it to sort the data by last name and then by first name. I obviously wouldn't do it by ID, that wouldn't make any sense. And I'm going to click next. It gives me an example, shows me that the primary key should be hidden but I have a first name, last name, and then the location here. Now here comes the referential integrity. It's actually only offering me either the um, cascade delete or the restricted delete. It's not offering me the cascade update. Um, but I've ticked that, that's the one thing I want, and I'm keeping my restriction with the delete. I'm not worried about the label, I'll sort that out myself, and I click on finish must save the table, save. Now let's see what that's actually done to the table. So we've done the student, and if we look at the lookup, nothing there. And we've done the instructor, and we look at the lookup, and that's what that wizard has just done for us. It's sorted all this out for us. Let's have a look at the data. If we go to student, it's just an empty box. If we go to lesson, we now have a drop down with all our options. But the, here comes the problem. I've choose Peter Mandrake and the word Peter will appear. Now that's actually forcing the data to already appear. I've already decided what data is going to appear here. There are ways of solving this one. That part. I, for example, I don't know which Peter that was. So let's go back to here 
and look to, let's go back to lookup and I can actually make changes to this data here to make it easier I click and I'm going to choose zoom this is a select query now we've already had a brief look at select queries but the first thing I can tell you is that if you haven't put spaces in any of your field names you can lose these square brackets and so on I'm not going to do them all at the moment equally if you're only dealing with the single table you're in you don't need the table name broken by the way so there you go so that all it tells you and that's just because access has tried to work out what you want if I run this again it's the same but the query still runs so let's have a look at this again I could also alter this query select instructor ID definitely first name then last name then txt area what I could do is something called concatenation which we've seen before by for example putting and speech marks space speech marks and and the j and means join so take the first name and join that to a space basically the speech mark says whatever in between here so space and then join this to the last name so take first name and space and last name and then I'm going to join this also and so I'm going to delete that comma I'm going to put speech marks space curved brackets and text area and then do the and to the rear end as well and that's going to put brackets around the text area so again I'm using this uh, ampersand which is a concatenation that's the flash term concatenation but basically it means to join so I've actually turned those in from one two three separate boxes to one single entity one single object within there I don't need to enter anything else I've removed the commas I can click on OK but notice I've now only got instructor ID and the first name box let's see how that works I'm going to save the table and go to the design view and we can see that everything's squished into here. You can see Stag Knight, for example. Stag Knight, what a strange instructor that is. But Stag Knight, for example, is in there. And I've got the C. So you can see what it's done to this data. But before we had Peter, Mandrake, and whatever area he was in. Stag Knight, and then C was over here. So they've all been into here. So I don't need these two. So let's go to the design view and have a look. Originally, we had four columns the instructor ID first name last name area but now we've only got two so I can get rid of four and replace it with two the first column the instructor ID was zero in size that was right but the other three were 2.54 centimeters so why don't I just simply make those five centimeters and look at the difference there this width is now five centimeters because it's zero plus five now what I can do is run this, obviously save it, and I now have that running, which is much, much nicer. This obviously this way of creating a relationship takes a little bit longer, but we've ended up with much, much more information. So that's quite nice. How has that affected our system? Well, we can do this, go to relationships, the database tools, relationships, nothing seems to have happened. So click on all relationships and you'll notice that our instructor now has a one to many relationship. Remember we weren't offered cascade update. Well if I go to the relationship itself, click, right click, edit, I can then choose the settings I want. But we've kept that and that's fine. So to have a look at that one more time, we have the vehicle side and all I'm going to do with the vehicle show table vehicle add 
take the vehicle, foreign key, the primary key, enforce, create. Here I'll go fussy about my straight line again. The only other one we had was user instructor, which was a relationship from instructor here to the instructor here. To make that work more effectively, I'm going to pull this to the other side and I'm going to take this at 90 degrees down there. Now this does create, in fact I'll tell you what, to keep my system, and I really do have an issue with straight lines, it's sad really, but I'm not going to erase it, so you don't have to. Okay. This is where my straight line theory isn't going to work, so I'm going to drag and drop that to there, enforce, create, and there's the relationship. So I have a one to many relationship, and if I m marry that up to the my other system, I can see that my instructor has a one to many to learner, but everything else has a one to many with my lesson. Let's have a look. My instructor has a one to many to my learner, but all my tables have a one to many relationship with lesson. That is my ERD. My ERD is now in my relationship, and therefore my system now is working. Close that, save the relationship, all my items work. Remember that the one way I showed you, which is to use the lookup wizard, allows you much more control over what you see. The problem I see with that later on is that you're actually defining the objects that someone has to work with. You can make changes later on to that and the way it works, but the other way is much more raw. It leaves it open to the programmer, or the developer, or the forms and queries to decide how that data is going to appear. Um, there are strengths and weaknesses to both. You'll discover which one suits you best, which one you're most comfortable with. Hopefully that's been helpful.